Good day. My name is Don Tipping, and it's early December, and I'm in one of our greenhouses here in southwestern Oregon at Seven Seeds Farm. And here we grow predominantly seeds, and we distribute them through Siskiyou Seeds. That's us. It's probably showing up backwards, which would be really difficult to say. And I just wanted to share a few thoughts and musings as we just went by this whole Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Giving Tuesday, and the ways in which we build relationships. And the more I look at the relationships between plants, animals, fungi, sunlight, water, soil, microbes, culture, history, our future, I see that what I tend to value and the people around me who I resonate with and can most easily understand don't tend to value things and nouns, but relationships. And that's how I see seeds, because a seed in and of itself, unless you eat it, has little intrinsic value without its relationship with the soil and water, sunlight, microbes and fertility that help it to grow, it can't actualize its potential of, of, of being having a yield that we can access or appreciate as a human being. So you know, just looking more at those types of relationships and we distribute seeds. We grow uh, about 200 varieties of seed per year here at our farm. And we work with a network of about a dozen growers throughout the Pacific Northwest to produce a total of about 700 varieties that we distribute. And we're happy to share seeds because this is the traditional way in which seeds have been exchanged at least for about the last hundred years. Before that, it was about relationships. You had to either grow the seed yourself, someone in your family did, or someone you knew and you had an exchange. But the exchange wasn't purely on the value of the commodity, it was based on the nature of the relationship you had to the place, the plant, the human beings. So with that in mind, I've been over the years trying to bring forth this idea we call our SEED CSA, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture, which was an initiative that initially started in Japan among Japanese housewives who were frustrated at the disappearance, increasing disappearance of fresh in-season produce. So they went direct to the farmers and said, how about we develop a relationship with you to support you to be the farmer and we'll make sure that everything you grow will help find a place for it. And thereby taking the burden of marketing and the business of running a farm off the shoulders of the farmer uh, for whom, you know, imagine if a, a, a doctor had to handle all the insurance billing and all of the business administration of doing their craft. So that's kind of the situation we're in with farmers. They're expected to not only know a very complicated um, set of skills to farm, but then they also have to figure out how to sell it and learn marketing and business and all of this. And, um, and it's very challenging, as you can imagine. And that's why most of us don't know any farmers. And the average income for farmers in the U.S. back in 2016 was negative $1,600 per year, which means that usually in that farm family, somebody had a job off the farm so that they could afford to lose money farming. And this is a very disturbing trend, and I see it all around me increasingly in the organic movement. So when we started our seed CSA movement, it was looking at the CSA, Community Supported Agriculture Movement with Produce, as a vehicle for how to shift that relationship of commodifying or tokenizing everything that we interact with, of putting value on it and inviting people into a relationship, a membership, if you will, with our seed farm. So if you can see all this on our website and I'll put all the links in the appropriate place. We have four different ways you can access the seed CSA relationship, four different tiers, if you will, and really it depends on the size of ground you're cultivating, all the way from uh, urban or 
you know, small scale raised bed type raised container garden, um, which we send you seeds four times per year at the appropriate time to plant those things. So we help keep you on track. And then up to a small garden, to a larger garden, all the way to a homestead scale. And as you go up in size, you get an increasing discount on the total seed. And what that helps us to do, much like the, the original CSA model is, it's December here on our farm. And even though we've been farming all season, we on a seed farm have to shift into um, a real active time. We're cleaning all the seeds, um, germination tests we do all in-house of everything we grow and everything we've grown in the past so we do about over a thousand germination tests where we count out a hundred seeds sprout them in controlled environment and then count how many grow and then the ones that don't grow don't move on we also are writing our catalog which we just finished doing and it's in the editing phase and should be going to the printer soon and then out into the hands of the people and we also have to do our, all our web updates. So we have an immense amount of work, but not that much income is coming in yet. So one reason why we want to do the seed CSA is saying, hey, you know, we're, I love doing this work. I love working with seeds and working with plants. And it certainly would be helpful if we had a, a wider circle of support. And I'm, I'm really grateful for all of the positive feedback I get in my life and those of us in the seed community for stewarding seeds. And because most of our relationships are based on this commodification of nature and this tokenization, really the only way you can support us is to buy a seed packet because we, we're not a nonprofit. And um, increasingly, I'm seeing a lot of the nonprofits and organic certifiers and advocacy groups um, that are out there supporting the organic farm movement or the seed freedom movement or the non-GMO movement. The people in those organizations oftentimes make far more than most of the farmers I know, uh, which is interesting because their whole livelihood is based upon the the those that are stewarding the, the gifts from the earth. So I don't know how to change capitalism, but I do know how to create an invitation to participate more deeply in a commitment to support us doing this work. And you're not just supporting me, you're supporting a circle of growers because we contract and buy seed from other organic small family farms and you're also supporting the training of young people because we train people here in how to grow seed and breed and select and clean and all those steps on our farm but we also invite folks in with the seed academy so participation in our seed csa is a great way great gift in case you're inclined towards that kind of thing um to help us keep doing this work because it I don't want to have to get another job off the farm. Um, I'm grateful for all the support, but I'm just trying to be transparent and real with you all that I know a lot of organic farmers that are thrown in the towel or who carry a lot of debt or uh, have some other thing they do that makes money. You know, And sadly, there's a joke. It, to me, it, it used to be funny. It's not so funny anymore because I see the reality of it. And it says, how do you make a million dollars farming? And the punchline is you start with two because there's so much overhead and capital and depreciation with farming that it, it's really difficult to get ahead. As you can see in the rest of our economy, we've shifted from a production-based economy where the US was about manufacturing, we made cars and steel and all these things, to now the, the big economy drivers are, is all tech. And you look at like Amazon doesn't even create anything, they just exchange things. Um, you know, same with uh, Facebook. They don't create anything, and yet Mark Zuckerberg is one of the wealthiest people in the world, and there's a crazy paradoxical irony because I'll probably be putting this video on some of these tech platforms. So, it, but it, what's important to, I, at least I want to kind of close in helping people understand is that the, the basis of civilization, as far as I see it, um, in terms of using the word civilization to describe human communities organizing to create a culture is based upon the physical substances of matter. It's based upon air, water, soil, and as far as I see it, seed too. And air and water are a bit of a given. 
clearly humanity is doing some things to foul those up, but we can't create those things really. Soil, you could say you could create soil, but by and large, it's a gift from the past that we are blessed with, and our task is just to steward it carefully, hopefully improve it. Uh, however, seed, at least the seeds for our food plants and also our most of our medicine and um, functional plants like cotton and this, this kind of thing that we use for our society, our culture, uh, it requires human engagement. And yet, everywhere you look, seed is under attack. It's being privatized. It's being undermined. It's not valued uh, like we might air or water. Um, you know, try going without air or water for a period of time and you'll, you'll, you'll really begin to value them. Uh, so seed right now we're watching being uh, co-opted by corporate interests and the increasing consolidation and the, the seed industry is a very alarming trait. Uh, Bayer just recently having bought Monsanto for $66 billion makes them the largest seed company in the world. I don't know if that's who we want taking care of it. So there's folks like myself and other small family farms. I totally encourage you if there's a small organic seed business in your region, support them because they're doing good work. But if you happen to live in our bioregion or like what we're doing and want to see us keep doing it, consider joining our seed CSA. And again, we have four different options for participating. And if you're, if this is really, you know, rubbing you the right way, I guess, uh, you know, and, and really lighting up a lot of bells for you, the lights. Uh, one idea that we're considering rolling out is this concept of a community seed bank and supplying, you know, an, another level of tier and training to encourage more people to start community seed banks. And that's, uh, for me, uh, I've been motivated around this work by Dr. Vandana Shiva from India, who, looking at, you know, how if you have a secure seed bank, it's a way to ensure long-term community food security and general stability for a region. So I really appreciate, uh, for those of you that have listened to this point, uh, hear me out and uh, just pondering some of these thoughts more deeply as we head into this season of consumerism and commercial commodification and uh, obligatory buying is uh, what kind of choices are each of us making in our life to create the world that we want to see and pass off to our children and grandchildren so i know for me I, I always want to remember those those sacred elemental forces of creation of earth, air, water, fire, and to me, seeds is a really close kin of that too. And we really we don't have a culture unless we have those things. I'm sorry to say that, um, but I I truly believe it to be true. And those places that have those things have a vibrant culture. And the more that we can focus on the what's truly important in life, then it enables us to have a culture, to feel gratitude, to share love, share kindness, and share compassion for our fellow humans. So many blessings on you. Thanks so much. Peace.